guys, FR Game here, and today we are, yeah, we're at school right now. Um, we're gonna be doing a vlog at school video today, and yeah, yeah, I, the other one I didn't like because I'll like that, but guys, okay, remember to leave like the time down below. Remember to giveaway ends tomorrow, September 1st. Only one person got five Malachite for on Save the World, um, but yeah. Um, it's, it's recess right now, but it's about to be, um, um, fourth period. So, here we go. Remember to leave a like subscribe down below. We got me 2,000 subscribers, and here we go. The are back is now, like, 9-12. We're going to the PE period. Um, I don't know what we're going to be doing in PE. Um, so, let's just walk back. Um, yeah. But, but uh, yeah. It's actually really hot out here, guys. I was, actually, I was playing a little bit of Fortnite. Just kidding. I haven't played Fortnite. Because our recess is only like 10 minutes. And then lunch is like maybe like 30 or 40 minutes. I actually don't even know. It seems like it's like 40 minutes. But I actually played a little bit of game called Zombies Royale. What? And I got like five or no, like three kills. And Zombies Royale, um, like every single match is like seven minutes long, so. I was playing solos, so. Um, so we're back in my class right now. We're just gonna record until he comes out. <sighs> Bradley, I'm recording for a YouTube video right now. Really? Yeah. What's up? Vlog at school. Hey, mom. He's vlogging at school. No. YouTube video. Oh, no. You're vlogging at school. Hey. You're gonna get in trouble. People on YouTube. Leave a like. <laughs> Remember to give away. Remember to give away on September 1st. Leave a like yeah. or come to your house. <laughs> huh? F F R R gaming. You guys, I have another channel called. It'll be in the link of this. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Um. I are. Search. Got me there. Alright, guys. So we're gonna go now. Leave like, subscribe down below. You guys are going to my backpack. Peace out. Actually. I'm just, uh, I'm okay, remember to leave like some time below. Um, here we go, guys. I said like 65 times. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna stop recording right now. We'll see you guys back. Actually, no, we'll see you guys hey, at fifth hey. period. I like you guys. Bye. Oh, you okay, guys, so we're back. And now I'm going to fifth period. And I can't record in the class because I'll get in trouble. So, here we go, guys. Well, I'll see you guys at lunch. Hey, okay, guys, we're back. And we're at lunch now. Um, I'm about to play Fortnite. <laughs> Yeah, I always play that, guys. And, uh, hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, I remember leaving like September down below. Giveaway ends September 1st. That's tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Wait, can I? Sadness. I can't zoom in. Yeah, I'm trying to zoom in. Wait, is this? No. I'm back. Okay, so, guys, we're going to go to 7th. Wait, 7th period now? So, in three, two, one. Oh, oh, guys. I'm gonna leave my 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 guys. I'm g
you'll need your history book, and your notebook so you can get over this. What?
So now we're going to read about the role of trade in Egypt. It's the bottom of 106 and the top paragraph on 107. You're on, can I go? Trade brought Egypt and Libya together. Egypt was rich in culture and soil, but it lacked forests, minerals, horses, and other useful resources found in Libya and other places. People in ancient Egypt had to get these resources through commerce with, con commerce. with, the, yep. commerce with the country's neighbors. Commerce is the buying and selling of goods and services. As the country grew in wealth, Egyptians were eager to buy out luxury goods from other lands. Luxury goods were good and Goods that they did not need. Luxury goods are goods that they do not need. Right, they don't but that made life more enjoyable in some ways. Such goods included animal skins, precious stones, and perfumes. Okay, so we're going to put some vocab there. Is it coming? Commerce and luxury trade both. <laughs> that was a weird laugh. Weird laugh. Trade. Egypt had two things that helped them in trade. They had sunshine and soil. Which aren't the things that they traded, but it was the things that allow them to produce the things they traded. Right? Because they traded surplus food. And Nubia, also sometimes known as Kush, had forests, horses, and minerals. So if you want precious gems, if you want wood to build anything, if you use horses, all of those things, Egyptians had to trade to get because they lived in the desert. And so no minerals to be mined from sand. Horses can't graze on sand. And forests don't have enough water in the desert to produce trees, right? Mine is starting tomorrow. I have the same ring, so I don't know. I brought mine flying home tomorrow, so. Wait, what did I buy? I can totally figure out what my sound bite. He's flying mine for here. Can I come? Oh, yeah. Where was he? He's been visiting my parents, his grandparents. So, anyway, okay, so Nubia had things. Because they were farther upland, they got more rain, they had forests, they could have horses, could graze on grass, but um, in Egypt they couldn't produce those things, but they could produce surplus food. So that's what they could trade. Commerce is a vocab word. Commerce is a vocab word. And it means buying and selling of goods and services. It's in your book. Another word for trade to buy and sell things, commerce. C O M M E R C E. He's a man of luxury goods. Which are things you don't need, but it sure does make life nice. Like phones. Like phones. And fancy cars. Like crazy vacation. <laughs> what? That movie. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen the movie. You've never seen the movie? I haven't seen that movie. <laughs> oh. She hasn't seen that movie. I've seen lots of movies, but not that. Okay, so luxury goods are goods they don't need, but that make life more enjoyable. And of course, we still have luxury goods today. Okay, looking on the map there, you can see the Egyptian kingdom is kind of in that darker orange, goes all the way up through Syria. The trade route on land are the green solid lines, and the trade routes on water 
are the red dotted lines. You notice some of the red dotted lines go across the Mediterranean Sea and some of them follow what? Uh, rivers. Rivers. Okay. In the Tigris and Euphrates rivers over in Mesopotamia, it follows almost the full length of the river. But in Egypt, it's only on the lower part of the river. From where it says Aswan there, from there north or downstream, right? They could trade that far. South of there are the cataracts. They couldn't get boats past it, so they couldn't trade past there by water. And you'll see the green pathways start from there because they had to switch to travel by land. They can't travel by river anymore. So they have to walk from the boat. Maddie's ready. Trade in the Eastern Mediterranean. The pharaohs organized expeditions to open trade with other lands. An expedition is a general trip taken for a special purpose. All trade goods brought back to Egypt by these expeditions belong to the pharaoh. Around 2500 BC, a pharaoh named Snefru. Snefru or those expeditions to the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. Okay, so we're just going to put this idea about trade expeditions in here, pharaohs and trade. This is an important idea. All trade goods from official expeditions belonged to the pharaoh. But in Egypt, all the wheat also belonged to the pharaoh. So the pharaoh could take his wheat, her wheat, and put it on a trade expedition and send it out and any wood or jewelry or horses or exotic animals like ostriches and elephants that they brought back from these trade expeditions belonged to the pharaoh. And then he was responsible for making sure everyone had enough to eat. And if he wanted to trade or sell his jewels and other luxury goods, he could sell them for more wealth. It kind of had a monopoly on the whole wealth thing. Expeditions belong. <coughs> belong. This is an L. And that's not even a word. So should you have asked me? Yeah. I didn't see the L. I said. No, but when you write something down that doesn't make sense. Ask a question. I didn't write it down, so I can't <laughs> Is that a word? Okay. Snefru. Oh. Snefru, around 2500 BC, was a pharaoh. What's in your book? He was a pharaoh who ordered trade expeditions. To the eastern? Snefru. It is. Snefru. S-N-E-F-R-U. Sounds like a sneeze. Snefru. 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 Guys, twenty five hundred BC. Clearly, I need to see if I can make it bigger. Does that help? Expedition. Okay, trade with Nubia. Please. 
term for the, the keyboard on a piano is called? Nope. Oh, I've it's heard this. Keyboard. Ebony and ivory. What? Because ebony is a black, as a wood that's that dark black color, and the ivory, the, the white keys on the piano used to be made from elephant. There's a movie that shows that. Yeah. But you can't get the elephants to give it up. What's that? And what? you can't cut it up while the elephant's alive. They have to kill it first. So they have to kill the elephants first. Which is illegal. Why can they just wait? Yeah, why can't they just wait for it to die naturally? Because they're eating people a lot of money now. And they're in the They live pretty long. They live in the desert. That's pretty long. Yeah, they. Ostrich feathers. Central America. They live in Central Africa, which is. Like the plains, Serengeti. They have to have they have to have grass and leaves and stuff. Yeah, they're in the plains. Yeah, in the desert. Yeah. Sandy dirt. Sandy sand. They would die. Leaves and grass. So they would die in the desert. Yeah. 
Okay. So as you can see, guys, focus, 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 focus. Okay. The elephants, not naturally. But these are people. Okay, I can show you another map. We get a little preview of something that's not, but I, this map is good. So here's Egypt over here. Okay. Here's Upper Egypt. Here's Lower Egypt. Ladies. Upper Egypt. Lower Egypt. Right. Down here is Nubia. Okay. So down here is where they get um, the animals. This, this kingdom of yeah, kingdom of Meroe, which is Nubia. Meroe is the city. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, so anyway, these people down here have access to all that stuff from the Serengeti Plain. Like when you watch the movies about Africa or what people are in Lion King, they're going to go see Lion King. And they're showing you the lions and the hyenas and the cheetahs and all that. They all live down here in the Serengeti Plain. Right. This part of here's all desert, except right along next to the river where it floods every year. Other than that, it's all sand, right? So they can't get all these exotic animals, ostrich feathers and wood and all that kind of stuff. They have to get it from down here. So these people are in the right spot because the Egyptians can give them wheat and they can get the other stuff and they can trade wheat to these people and then they get all those good luxury goods and then they can trade in Egypt. These people right here, that's a good place to be. Right? Okay, read for me please. Egyptian people live in the desert. Yes, they do. Trade and conquest. To protect his life, Egypt gentlemen. conquered most of Nubia. Nubia. Egyptian called this region Kush. So the, the Nubians called it Nubia. But the Egyptians had a different name for it. And once they took it over, guess who got to pick the name? The people in charge. Okay, keep going. The Nubians also had to pay tribute. Pay tribute, yep. Yeah. Pay tribute to the Pharaoh. Tribute is the a payment made by a conquer people to a stronger power. One year tribute one year's tribute payment is to the Pharaoh that Moses the third. That Moses the third included hundreds of pounds of gold, cattle, slaves, ostrich feathers, and iron irony from Nubia. Over time the Nubians adopted many aspects of or people or features of Egyptian culture. They wore Egyptian clothes and worshiped Egyptian gods. They spoke and they spoke the Egyptian language. Nubian soldiers who were famous as ar as archers. Archers served in Egyptian army. Some Nubian Nubians rose to become high government officials. All right. <laughs> so, trade and conquest. I wonder how many soldiers they had in the UK. Why did they walk? Like, they did, did, they, they, did they, they have every man that they was worth the white people? No. I don't know how they decided. Let's say all
pictures you can look at if you're done and waiting. The one on the left shows the uh, princes bringing the tribute. And you can see all the stuff piled up on the shelves there on the right. They're presenting. So that shows the tribute payment, which is that, yes, you conquered us. Please don't hurt us more. We'll keep you happy and give you all our stuff. Yay. And on the right-hand side <coughs> shows the Kush army oh, a lot of so you, in their left hand they're carrying their arrows in their right hand they're carrying their bows Those look like kind of but they are arrows there are definitely bows because you see in their left hand are the arrows Egyptian 
army. became Egyptian government officials. So slowly, piece by piece, Egypt kind of chomped up Nubia a little bit at a time until they conquered most of it. And that was what this was at this time here that we're caught up to. Okay? And then relations between Egypt and Kush. Bessie James, bring it on. Right now. Bessie James, you can do it, Rob. Three, two, one, go! Okay, so Ramses, Ramses the Great, we learned about him yesterday. He was the statue builder who loved himself. No, Hatshepsut was a girl. Ramses was a guy. So he's the one who had conquered all of this territory, went up here and walked to the Hittites. But um, other than that, he was pretty successful. When he died, after ruling for almost 60 years, government kind of fell apart. So Ramses the Second died. And after he died, the government collapsed. And you can imagine a kingdom the size of Egypt, where there's been a king for 60 years, when that king dies, suddenly everybody's going to fight each other to see who gets to take over after him. And they were so busy fighting each other that they forgot about the Nubians. Who just kind of quietly took back their own territory and took back their own country and were no longer controlled by Egypt. They're smart. So Nubia became its own kingdom again. Okay, so now we're going to learn a little bit about the people in Kush, or Nubia, after that. So, the Egyptians called it Kush, the Nubians themselves called it Nubia. Yes? Well, so did Ramses have a son? Several, many. So why didn't they become kings? So they were fighting it out to see which of them was strong enough to be the king. Because he had, he, he was king in the days when um, pharaohs or kings had a lot of wives. Like, mm -hmm. a lot. Lots of like wives? Half the, the, closer to 50. 50 wives? Yeah. He, had big, he had a big palace. Everybody had their, the, the women all stayed in the wing over there. Okay. That was the one that's part of the palace. Oh, I thought it was just like six, but no, fifty. No. Yeah, so he had like a hundred kids. So, <laughs> Haley, you should see your favorite. I know. Well, anyway, he did. So, 
So the ones who are old enough and had some power were fighting it out amongst themselves. And some of them, like people picked favorites, like teams. And they were like fighting with that person and trying to get them in power because they were a friend of them. So if their person got in power, then they would have power too. But that same thing happened with this son and that son and this other son. And so it was just it was kind of chaotic. War, war, war. More like civil war. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Question? So like in the picture, it says the... The man with the arrow. Yep. But but I have a question. Is how how did they make their bows with with sticks? And well, why did they shoot sticks at the end? Old fashioned <laughs> bows. Even and why are they naked? Oh, they're not. Oh, they're not. They live in the Sahara Desert. Yeah. Why can't they just go to like a new land? <laughs> Because they built all these temples. Yeah, they had where they were from. That's like saying, well, why don't you just move to New York? You know, it's a big deal. So, you guys. I'll wait. What? What? Seriously, Kevin? We'll get to all that. We're not in that chapter yet. Okay. So, um, I can't remember what it was because I got distracted by all of you having separate conversations. It's not Carter. Carter's asking questions on topic. I don't mind questions on topic. It's all the hoopla that's going on over there. Okay. So, um, what was the question? The question was something about uh, oh the bows. Yeah, I was going to answer the question about the bows. So, old-fashioned bows everywhere in the world were just made out of a particularly flexible, strong wood. That's normal. It's not until we got into much later times, like the last couple of hundred years, that people have made bows that are recurved and some of the modern technology that we see with bows now. Old-fashioned bows, especially African bows, were very long and they were made from a single stick. And they tied the string or the leather or the sinew at one end and then they would press it down on the ground with a loop and bend it and hook the loop over on the bottom and it would and that would part curve it. So if they are all wooden bows. Why would they have sticks or the arrows? Well, that even now, sure. arrows are sticks. They just put a sharpened end on it. Well, well, if they didn't, and they just have regular sticks, and they didn't even do that, and then they just... No, they put sharpened the end ends or, sharp, or arrowheads on the end of sticks. That's well, how people have been making it. arrows for millennia, thousands of years. Well, well, they didn't know how to okay, they clearly well, they did, did because that's what they're showing. Okay. No, not too many questions, but they clearly did know how to do it because they were known for being fierce in battle and their weapon of choice was the bow and arrow. Okay. The questions? Okay. Ready? Whatever's next. Uh, Egypt, un no, Cush conquers Egypt. So we had Egypt conquering Cush. Ramses II died. Cush took back its own land. Nubia took back its own land. Now they're going to come back, because remember, Egypt's not paying a lot of attention right now, and conquer Egypt. Go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the mid-700s BC, the Nubian king conquered the Egyptian town of Thebes. Thebes? Mm -hmm. Is it Thebes? Yeah. The next ruler of Cush, a king named Hayyeng, oh, expanded the Cush, Cush, I empire by conquering one Egyptian. One Egyptian city after another. The city of Hermopolis. Hermopolis. Oh. However, refused to surrender. Aye. 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 Issued these orders, surrounded the city and captured its people. Let's not let not, not the peasants not the peasants go forth to the field and let not the plowman plow, 
Yeah. Bye guys. Yeah. Woo.